economic perspective, we can lead the world in renewable energies and we should be doing that and we should be exporting that technology, we should be exporting that expertise right across the world. It's, uh, it's interesting, I know I'm probably preaching to the converted here, but I've got, uh, I went onto the, the, um, the Australian government's website this morning just to get some few facts and to, to tie in what's happening globally to what's happening locally and, 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 have, uh, and relate those impacts to how it actually impacts us right here in the local Port Macquarie Hastings area. Um, from a council perspective, we look at it from a risk governance perspective. So what are the risks to us as a council? How are we going to govern more generally for our broader community? And what are the opportunities there for us as a local government body, but also as a, as a community? Um, the principles of good risk governance are identification, assessment, management, and communication of risks. And we're seeing these risks play out more severely with the insurances with the Insurance Council of Australia. Um, we know that all but 20 of the largest property losses in the country in the past four decades have been weather related and even though that accounts for just 2% of the global reinsurance market, Australia accounted for 6% of all losses in the five years leading up to 2013. It's having a massive impact. Climate change having a massive Im impact on insurance. The Australian Centre for Financial Studies was told the combination of more frequent events together with increased propensity of people to live in vulnerable, low-lying coastal areas and in tree change locations, so areas like ours, has ensured that insurance costs are rising and its affordability falling, as an increased proportion of the population is affected each year. That has a big impact on us from a social perspective. Um, not only being able to ensure to make sure that we live where we live and we can insure our houses, but also um, the affordability <coughs> issue with living where we live here. Uh, we are in a regional area. We do struggle more with cost of living. That needs to be taken into account and the insurance aspect is going to be playing a bigger, bigger part well into the future. For us, um, around 32% of the population live in New South Wales and the impacts that will affect us from climate change here in the Hastings local government area will be three big ones mainly. That'll be infrastructure. So in New South Wales alone, with the predicted sea level rise of 1.1 metres, there'll be 6,500 residential buildings with a current value of $20 billion that are impacted by that. 4,800 kilometres of New South Wales roads, up to 320 kilometres of New South Wales railways, and up to 1,200 commercial buildings, with a combined estimated value over $20 billion. This is from the government's own website. In 2009, the report climate change risk to Australia's coast, and an update in 2011 climate risk to coastal buildings and infrastructure, noted that Port Macquarie Hastings Council will have between 150 and 250 kilometres of roads at risk from impact of inundation and shoreline recession. That ranks us number eight in the local government uh, impacts on local roads. Now that, you might say, well, you know, that's, that's just roads, but that infrastructure affects everybody, that infrastructure affects our rates, that infrastructure affects our way of lives, it passes all the way through and from a governance perspective it is really important as a local government authority that we are managing that risk and looking for opportunities into the future. Um, not only that but also the water supply where climate change is likely to increase in an, uh, in an likely to result sorry, in an increase in evaporation throughout the catchments with the Sydney Water Balance Project predicting that up to 9% increase in pan evaporation in coastal catchments by 2070. So for us as a local water supply authority as well, uh, that impacts how we're going to deal with that into the future. We're looking at sea level rises where we're going to put pump stations and the like. We can't put them in low-lying areas. Um, and our water supply is absolutely critical to us into the future. It, it is the major issue for us a lot more than roads or any other infrastructure. Um, extreme events, we know that it's going to get hotter 
uh, we know that the fire seasons are going to start earlier and end later. This is going to impact on us locally. There'll be human health impacts, natural environment impacts and agriculture. All these impacts, we've identified the risks. Okay, so what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it as a council and what are we doing about it? Number of things, we're doing some flood studies. So flood studies for the Hastings and Camden Haven have been up, updated, acknowledging the flooding implications associated with increased rainfall and sea level rise attributed to climate change. Uh, the draft Lake Katai Coastal Zone Management Plans will take into effect the impacts of coastal erosion and impacts of climate change on coastal erosion. We're doing an internal risk assessment um, on the effect climate change may have on council infrastructure. An example of an outcome here is that future water intake points may need to be relocated to account for increased salt water purging up the river. Because we pump out of the river, we need to take that into account. But there are opportunities as well. What are we doing on the opportunity side? So we're mitigating the risk on one side and we're looking for further opportunities on the other side. Um, solar panel installations have been undertaken on the Port Macquarie Hastings Library, the Glass House, the Cancross Composting Plant. And, and currently we're out the tender for panels on council headquarters as well. Um, energy efficient heat pumps have been installed in the Warhope Pool. And probably the biggest one, the most important thing that's happened more recently was at last Wednesday's council meeting. Council resolved to provide a report, and it was unanimous, to provide a report on the options for development of a long-term energy strategy which focus, focuses on the future sustainability of Council to systematically leverage all Council assets across the organisation in order to facilitate the generation of the maximum amount of electricity from renewable resources. That's a big one for Council, not only just saying, well, we want to source um, our electricity from renewable sources, but we also want to start to move into that space and look at opportunities where we can drive it more broader throughout the community. There are opportunities for Council there uh, to provide financial sustainability off the same thing. I know quite often people look at it and say, well, we've got the environment and we've got renewable energy sources and then we've got the economy over here they are not diametrically opposed they are linked completely yes. we understand that as a local government area we are doing the right thing in terms of corporate governance by the community and we are doing the right thing by the planet we're also doing the right thing by our finances so um thank you for coming out today and uh, i hope you enjoyed this speech thank you